Good morning. Praise the Lord. All right, let's go to our Bibles over here to the book of Matthew, chapter 11. We'll go Lord in prayer. Father God, we come to you today in the name of Jesus. We're so thankful, Lord, we can. That we can come forward to the throne of grace to obtain mercy and find grace to help time and need. So, Lord, we thank you for Jesus the, who gave us life and now more abundantly. And Lord, we pray for our nation today. You said in your word, I exhort therefore that first of all, supplications, prayers, intercessions, and giving of thanks be made for, made for all men, for kings and for all authority. We may lead a quiet, peaceful life, all God and honesty. So, Lord, we thank for our president, vice president, senators, and congressmen, the Supreme Court justice, federal, state, local judges, governors, mayors, police officers, the armed forces, FBI, CIA, DHS. Lord, we claim the salvation, deliverance, and protection. They hearken diligently to the voice of the word of God. And we, Lord, we pray for the nations of the world, that every nation has a gospel preached as a witness, then then should come. That every day more sinners are receiving Jesus Christ than the day before. And every day more believers being filled with the Holy Spirit, speaking other tongues, being taught about who they are in Christ Jesus, going forth, ruling and reigning Christ. And Lord, we pray for all those ministries out there that's preaching Jesus Christ. We thank the Lord that you're equipping them, that you're giving people help, ministry of help, partners, intercessors, co-laborers, the bound of the work of the Lord. And Father God, I thank you, Lord, for anointing me today. That they'll be able to say and do what you have me say and do. Thank you, Lord, for giving me under the Holy Ghost. And I pray, follow us, Lord, as we hear your word. And hear from the Holy Ghost, we'll go forth and become doers of the word, led by the Spirit of Jesus' name. Amen. All right, let's go to our Bibles over here to um, Matthew chapter 11. And we'll read some scriptures here in the Gospel of Matthew. In Matthew chapter 11. Now, read, let's read here in verse 18 and 19. Jesus said this, For John came neither eating nor drinking, and you say he hath a devil. Now, verse 19, The Son of Man came eating and drinking, and you say, Behold, a man a gluttonous and wine-bibber, a friend of publicans and sinners, but wisdom is justified by her, her children. Then here in chapter 12, Jesus said this, or about, they said about Jesus. We'll start in verse 22. Then was brought on him one possessed the devil, blind and dumb, and he healed him, insomuch the blind and dumb both spake and saw. And all the people were amazed and said, Is this not the son of David? But when the Pharisees heard it, they said, This fellow, talking about Jesus, doth not cast out devils but by Beelzebub, the prince of the devils. Now we'll go here to 1 Corinthians. Let's go to 1 Corinthians chapter 13. Now, let's start here in this verse 4. The scripture says, I'm reading the King James, says charity. It's also the, the agape kind of love, the God kind of love. Suffer the long is kind, charity endeth not. Uh, charity born of non-self is not puffed up. Do not behave yourself unseemly, seek or not our own. It's not easily provoked. Think of no evil. Rejoice not iniquity. Rejoice, but rejoice truth. Beareth all things, believeth all things, hopeth all things, or endureth all things. Charity never faileth. Now, God gave us his love. He put it in our heart and we got born again. Remember Romans chapter 5, verse 5 says, The love of God is shed abroad in our heart by the Holy Ghost. And Galatians 5, 6 says, Faith works by love. Now, they accused Jesus of being a wine bibber and a glutton and, you know, criticized him. You know, we, today we say making fun of him. But Jesus did not that affect him. And one of the keys to be successful in life is you can't be sensitive to what people say about you or what they think about you. I mean, that's a real destroyer of success. Because What happens is it intimidates the person or gets them angry and upset. You know, many people allow that to get into them. Now, it comes to all of us. Jealousy, hatred, envy. Your minds can think about all kinds of trash. But what we want to do is wash our minds with the Word of God. That we're always reading the Word, meditating on the Word, and listen to people preach God's Word. Times are refreshing comes the presence of the Lord. And so often... Your mind goes off in some area about how people don't like you or how they don't treat you at church. And many people just quit and give up. They'll leave the church, not because God told them to, but they just got their feelings hurt. See, but love doesn't get offended. Amplified says, takes no account of the evil done to it. Pays no attention to the suffered wrong. And what happens to people that's oversensitive? They end up quitting and giving up. You know, many people left the ministry over it, left Bible schools. They believed God wanted them to go to Bible school, but then you know, situations arose that they didn't like. They didn't like the way they were treated or how they felt. Well, you think about all what Jesus went through, but he never quit. The Apostle Paul, you know, night and a day in the journeys, perils of robbers, perils of country, perils among false brothers. Think about going through all that, but he still went on. The greater one, the Holy Spirit dwells in each believer to help us go on. But you'll have this tendency, you'll want to quit and give up. 
because it looks better if you don't have to go through what you think you're going through. But the way you get stronger is you endure things. You know, you, you don't grow in, in happy times and you don't grow in comfortable times. You grow when you use God's word, the name of Jesus, your authority against problems in your life. You resist it. You stand against it. You refuse it. You stop it. You bind it. And that's how you develop. I mean, it's just like developing your muscles. You'd have to work out and exercise, which may not be any fun, but nevertheless, the results are forthcoming. And people, bless their hearts, have a tendency to quit and give. You think about your parents and grandparents, how they didn't have it soft. But so, so, so often people are so soft today, they get, they're so sensitive that they allow themselves to get offended about anything. And social media has really opened that door where people are just so concerned how they've been treated. Well, it's not how we've been treated, it's how we respond to this. If you want to be successful, then you have to resist all this amenity, these things that come to you of hatred, what people say about you. Think about how they're talking about Jesus, who never did do anything wrong at all, never sinned one time, and accused him of what he did, saying he cast out devils because he's got this demon in him, Beelzebub, and he's a wine bibber, he's a drunkard. Look what they said about John the Baptist. He doesn't eat, he doesn't drink. See, there's, no matter what you do or don't do, people are, are going to criticize you. There, there, there's people, they're, they're haters, and they're just this way. Let's going to live that way. But you don't want that to get off on you. You don't want that spirit to get off on you as a believer. So you're always constantly, it's good to read love scriptures every day. You know, you, you, I got an Amplified Bible just for 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 4 through verse 8. Because Amplified amplifies it. And I memorize the scriptures, being to quote them to myself. And, and work every day to, to walk in love. And there's, it's always a lot of work. But faith works by love. And we need to realize that it's important that we do walk in love and forgive others, not hold resentment against anybody and not be bitter against anyone, but be, rejoice that they're blessed. Thank God for it. But people stay poor and unsuccessful because they're so sensitive. They, they blame everyone for what's going on in their life. It's, it's, not, it's never their fault. And you have your work with somebody that it, nothing was ever their fault. It's, it's, it's amazing that no matter what happened, it wasn't their fault because they don't take the responsibility for their own life. But God places love in each born again child of God. And we need to exercise that love by putting it in action. That means you, we love people that's not lovely. People that's not easy to love. You know, but we were there in Matthew. Go back to Matthew chapter 5, please. In Matthew chapter 5, walk in love is the cure to everything in life. And just refusing to get out of love and get resentment and bitterness and stay out of it. But here, Jesus taught us here in, in uh, Matthew chapter 5, in verse 43. Jesus said, You've heard it been said, Thou shalt love thy neighbor and hate the enemy. But I say to you, love your enemies, bless them that curse you, do good to them hate you, and pray for them spitefully use you and persecute you, for you, that you may be the children of your father and for he make the sun to rise on the evil and on the good. He send it rain on the just and unjust light. For what love? For if you love them which love you, what reward have you? Do not public the same. If you salute your brethren only, what do you more than others? Do not public so. Be there perfect as your father which heaven is perfect. Now that means we love people that don't treat us right. That's how love grows. The God kind of love. It's a fruit. And it develops by being around people that kind of rub you the wrong way. And people are going to criticize you. It's called persecution. And they're going to make fun of you. But don't let that affect you. It's, if it's not the truth, just forget about it. If it's something you need to make adjustment on, then you make the adjustment. I mean, we learn by people correcting us. We submit to one another. I mean, that's how we did a lot of adjustments in our life. Hey, we didn't see something we were doing. Other people may have pointed it out. Hopefully, they had their, our best interests in mind. But nevertheless, you know, we ain't going to change. Whether they change or not, we change. You know, you don't want to wait for anybody else to change. You just change as a believer. You, you make the adjustments you need. And here Jesus said, love, bless, do good, and pray. For people who? The people don't treat you right. And somehow people don't get this yet. They, they hear love preached and hear preached and hear preached, but they still just refuse to act upon it. They think nothing, it's okay to hold something against someone. But it's not okay. It affects your life. It affects your health. Your body can't handle it. Your body can't handle unforgiveness. Your body can't handle strife. It starts breaking down. It ages it. You know, a person gets to, you know, get to look nasty because they just were so hateful and bitter and not get rid of it, and just bound determined they weren't going to do anything unless they felt like it. And your life, your body begins to shut down as soon as you do that. But you're sending a signal to it that you don't want to live any longer. It, it needs to be energized 
and you energize it by just making yourself do things you normally wouldn't make yourself do that's unfamiliar, uncomfortable. And you see many believers never succeed in life. I mean, every church has some in it. Some have more than others. If they're taught God's word and they're not applying it, then what they're, you know, what they're hearing is not benefit that many. Though the message may be true, if it's God's word, it is true. But the Bible said there in Hebrews chapter 4, verse, verse 2, Paul said by the Holy Spirit, The gospel was preached unto us as well as was unto them. But the word being preached to them did not profit them. Now why? Not being mixed in faith in them that heard it. Remember James 1.22 said, But be a doer of the word of God, not hearer only. I never knew what that even meant. And just one day it just hit me. That means, oh, I see it now. If that means if the Bible says forgive people, then forgive people. The Bible says tithe, then tithe. The Bible says give, then give. I got it. That's what it means. It's putting God's word in action. There in Matthew chapter 7, beginning verse 24, Jesus talking about two people, two different men. Both of them heard the word. One of them decided to do the word and build a foundation, built their house upon a rock. And the storms came, and they do come. But he withstood it because his was found on a rock. But the other man heard the message but didn't do it. And so his life was his his life or the house was taken out. And the, the storm, came, same storm came to both of them. The, what was the difference? We've got two Christians here. One succeeds and one doesn't. The one that keeps doing the work. But the one that just, amen, goes to church, that's about it, become really spiritually lazy. And you can't afford to do that. you got to make yourself every day, get in God's word, read God's promises, get the scriptures and mark them in your Bible. Promise especially, go back over them. I mean, we all have the same amount of time. But what we're going to do by doing that, we're training our flesh. This is what we're going to do. But f flesh tries to wiggle out of it. Every day, it, th it thinks in some way we won't have to do this today. And it's hoping that we won't. But no, it's the best thing for our flesh is to keep us in the Word. Feeding our spirit man, renewing our mind to God's Word. Stand on God's promises. And coming against anything that would come against us. And every day we're going to have an opportunity to get out of love, get over strife, strife and jealousy. Envy. The Bible says that James' the strife enters in, every other your force comes in. That's a doorway that Satan comes in through to steal, kill, and destroy. And we just need to know that I, I'm just going to keep on walking in love and God's going to help me. And when those thoughts come to you, cast them down. And sometimes we have to go apologize to people, but you know, so what? I mean, that's how we grow. That's how we develop. We don't want to be soft. Soft is dangerous because we won't succeed. Not applying God's word. We want to be strong in the Lord, the power of his might. And work on being stronger every day of our life. And, and, and make ourselves do the word of God. Practice God's word. Here we have Jesus tells love. The first thing he said about prayer. Pray for them to spy for you and persecute you. Think about this. You know, that's you know, those are the people maybe you work with. Them, maybe your neighbors. A lot of times, you know, your mind will tell you, you need to get back to that person. You don't take this from people. But love does. Love can handle anything. Because love never fails. The God kind of love never fails. Everybody's got human love, whether you use it or not. But only a born-again child of God has the God kind of love in the heart. And it's deposited in there by the Holy Spirit. And God gave us his love so we could love people. I mean, think about him. He loves everybody. And he doesn't remember what they did wrong. See, love takes no account of the evil done to, pays no attention to suffer wrong. And sometimes, you know, you, some people, probably we've all done it. I'm sure I probably have, but begin to add up how many times a person did this. I've shared with you before about Tom, a guy who used to work for me. I, I, I thought to myself many times, you know, many mornings I wake up, today's the last day for Tom. Well, then, you know, then you think about love scriptures. Love, you know, takes account, doesn't take account of the evil done to it, everything else. Well, then th through those scriptures, through the Lord, would kind of calm me down. And by the afternoon, I thought, you know, okay, I'm going to leave, leave this alone. See, we get all these kind of ideas come to us, but they're not from God. See, we can take a lot more than we realize we can take. And we're the ones going to grow out of it. If I, if I walk in love, I'm going to be the one that gets the blessing. That's how I look at it. So the reward comes. And we need to, you know, enjoy those blessings. Over here to, uh, let's go over to 1 Peter. In 1 Peter chapter 3. The Bible says here in, in verse 7, Likewise, you husbands, dwell with them according to knowledge, giving honor to the wife as in the weaker vessel, and being heirs of, heirs of uh, together the grace of life, that your prayers be not hindered. Now think about this. Prayers can get hindered. People thought, well, just God didn't answer the prayer. No, it says here prayers can be hindered. Now how could it be? Not, well, he goes on and says here, if 
Finally, be of all one mind, having compassion one another, love as brother, and be pitiful, be curious, not rendering evil for evil or railing for railing, but contrarize blessing, knowing that you are there unto called, you should inherit a blessing. For he that will love life and see good days, let him refrain his tongue from evil and his lips to speak no guile. Remember, Ephesians said, Let no corrupt communication proceed out of our mouth. Now, this area has got to be careful in, you know, because it's real easy to say something we shouldn't be saying. And we need to catch ourselves. On it. Every time it happens, we should catch yourself on it to monitor ourselves that we don't talk that way about people. Let God deal with the people. You know, He can do a lot better job than we can. But pe but people get out of control because they don't walk in love as Christians, as believers. And even the world has human love, but we have the God kind of love. And we need to exercise that love every day. It's a fruit, it needs to grow and develop. That means we have to forgive people, we have to let things go, we can't dwell on them. You know, it's no wonder people lose their mind. They keep dwelling on things that someone did to them years ago. I mean, every family reunion or picnic they'd have or party they'd have, there'd be something that would happen. Sure, the devil would come in and try to cause something to happen. And then somebody got upset and never went back just because someone didn't return their Tupperware or whatever. I mean, some of the stuff's crazy. But they'll make a big issue out of it because someone didn't like their food or someone corrected their child and you know someone didn't like their dog or cat it just it goes on and on and on and on and they feel just as okay it's all right for me to do this it's not right to do that it's not okay it's gonna hit it's gonna affect your health because the word says so now that's why I don't want to do this because I, I want to have good health I hate I can't put in words how much I hate pain and sickness and disease so I got to work on Jesse all the time and this tells me if I'm gonna love life and have good days sick days aren't good days then I gotta walk in love. I gotta forgive people. And people are gonna say things about you. But I, I, as far as I know, I've never retaliated. Let them say what they wanna say. It's the one, I gotta answer the Lord. And sometimes they're right. So then the Lord let me know they're right. You, you, what you're doing is wrong. Okay, so I make adjustment. But nevertheless, that's how we grow and that's how we develop. Is that an octopus? Okay, anyway, back to, we've got God's promises. Got your attention, didn't it? So we've got God's promises to stand upon, and we need to make sure that we do everything we can to walk in love. Now, so how the people talk, how they treat, we don't talk that way. We don't act that way. We're believers, born again. And we, we should, how do you treat people that you do love? Then just treat everybody that way. And people, every person that's born again needs to walk in love. It's the number one, Jesus said, a new commandment I give you is to love one another, as I've loved you, that you also love one another. By this shall all men know you're my disciples if you have loved one towards another. And you just have to sell yourself what the word says. I'm not touchy. I'm not fretful. I take no account of the evil done to me. I paid no attention to suffered wrong. I'm not envious or jealousy. I don't rejoice in iniquity. I rejoice in the right truth prevails. I bear up anything and everything that comes. I'm ever, ready, I'm ever ready to believe the best of everyone. So people come along and tell you about something. And you know, you're, once your mind go there. I mean, one time this pastor called me up. It was early in the morning. And he said he needed to talk to me and sound like, you know, sound like something terrible happened. And he said, you know, Pastor so-and-so? Uh, yeah. And he said, well, you know, he's left for another woman. And I got real quiet on the phone, and just a few seconds can sound like a long time. And he goes, oh, well, I, I just called to tell you, Brother Rich, so you can pray. I said, Brother, no, you didn't. You didn't call me to have me pray. You want to be the first one to tell Jesse Rich what you found out. A brother, don't act that way. You know, you got a family, you got kids. You want that to come back on? I don't know what I said, but you want that to come back on you? You see, you don't want to sow those seeds because they'll come back to you. Jesus said, judge not, at least you be judged. For the judgment you judge, you should be judged. You know, over here in, in Romans chapter 14, the scripture says here in verse 4, Who art thou that judge another man's servant? To his own master you stand or follow. Yea, he should be held up, for God is able to make him stand. And then in Galatians chapter 6, Let's start verse 1. Brethren, if, if a man be overtaken a fault, false sin, ye which are spirit to restore such one in spirit of meekness, consider thou self, least thou also be tempted. Bury one another's burden, so fulfill the, the law of Christ. For if a man think himself be something wins nothing, he deceive himself. Now, people that act this way about other people and they hear something they did and act like they've never done it or thought this way, they get in trouble over this. They don't make the adjustment on that. I've, I, I've been in mystery, ministry for a while and maybe in mystery to some people for a while, but I've seen things happen. 
and you try to talk to people, you know, try to help them out, let them know that you don't want to, you don't want to hang on to this. But you know, sometimes you get some people to change, but, you, but many times you didn't because they didn't see the significance of it. And you want to be very careful about handling situations that, you know, that your flesh wants to do something about it, but you haven't got inspiration from the Holy Spirit about it. See, the Holy Spirit's not a condemner. Now, you pastors, you know how you run your church. You'll have to follow God about, you know, what He wants you to do because such situations will arise. You will have to deal with it. And the scriptures teach you about that. But I would highly recommend you exhaust love first and make sure you're not in the flesh when you are doing it and not doing it because you're just angry about it or don't like the person. That you take time to pray about it. Sometimes I've had situations that I took two or three weeks praying about before I did anything about it. I'm talking about fasting and praying to wait on God, see what I'm supposed to do about it. Because those things aren't fun to deal with. And you have to deal with people, you know, because you're an authority, you're a leader. But nevertheless, I would highly recommend you do walk in love first. Because you won't be in a situation where you're promising God you won't act that way again. You, we want to maintain our divine protection, the divine health. And so when our mind starts thinking about things, we need to get a hold of that. Because it, a few days go by and you've been thinking about it the whole time. I've never seen someone walk in hell that didn't keep their mouth shut. I've never seen someone walk in hell that didn't forgive other people. I've never seen someone walk in hell that just allowed themselves to act the way they wanted to act to people and just they wanted to ignore them, they ignored them. That, that doesn't work out. And they, they, yet they were born again, spirit-filled Christians, do healing scriptures. Uh -uh. It's too, you know, we just read there in Peter. You, we can't act that way. Not if we're gonna, not if it's gonna be well with us. Now, if we made mistakes and got a love, we all have, then we make the correction. There's no guilt and condemnation, but we need to make the change. Sometimes some of these things happen, gets our attention. Realize that, hey, I was going the wrong direction here, and God kind of flagged me down. See, love never fails. And there's divine protection walking around. He that dwells in the secret place most high shall abide in the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He's my refuge and my fortress, my God and my trust. Surely He's delivered from the snare of fowl and from the noise of pestilence. He shall cover His feathers and His wings shall trust. His truth be shield, shall be thy shield and buckler. Thou shalt not be afraid of terror by night, nor of fly by day, nor pestilence walk in darkness, nor destruction waste in noonday. A thousand fall at thy side, and ten thousand right hand, but it shall not come nigh thee. Only thy eyes shall behold and see the world wicked. Because thou hast made the Lord, which is my refuge, even the most high thy habitation. There shall no fall, and there shall no plague come out of thy dwelling. For he shall give his angels charge over thee, keep thee in all thy ways. There shall bear thy hands, lest thou dash your foot against stone. Thou shalt trample upon a lion, an otter, a young lion, dragon shall trample thee. Because he said his love upon me, therefore I would deliver him. I would set him high, because he's known my name. He should call upon me, and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver and honor him. With a long life, I will satisfy him, show him my salvation. So God wants us to have protection. He wants us to have a long life. He gave us his angels. And the Bible says in Psalm 103, verse 20, they hearken to the voice of the word of God. That's one of the reasons why we speak God's word. It's because angels are dispatched. They go about doing things. We may not see them, but they're working all the time, helping us out, helping us in the ministry, helping us in our homes and our families. And God gave us the Holy Spirit who leads us and guides us, and we have the wisdom of God dwelling inside of us. And it's just smart to walk in love. It's healthy to walk in love. It's, it's, it's prosperous to walk in love. And you may look like you're taking advantage of, but the more those pa pa ta the test you passed, the stronger you get in walking in love. And, you know, we should be further along at this than we were when we got started. You know, look back at it. You know, it's like if you start exercising and, and dieting, you, know, you expect results right away, but it's going to take a little bit of time here. Where you start getting seeing the results and that could be discouraging but nevertheless you keep doing it anyway well spiritually speaking it's like the same thing we, t we put god's word first we do our part to examine our heart make sure that we don't have those ill feelings against anybody and reject them when they come say no that's not my thoughts satan in jesus name i refuse that and if we need to apologize we apologize and i've had to go to a lot of people and apologize because i was wrong and you're wrong you're wrong you know and just make the adjustment on it but what keeps people from doing that, they act like they're never wrong. Everybody's wrong sometime or another, you know? So we have to make those corrections. We're children, we mess up. And we do, hey, praise God. You know, I've offended you in any way, I apologize in Jesus' name, but that's not my intent. But the problem is, you know, situations arise like that. And we take God's word and we use it in our life. And one thing is so important, the most important thing that I know of is walk in love. And just keep working on it, keep on tweaking it. It gets very quiet and sobering when you preach this way, but nevertheless, we need to hear it. I need to be reminded, you know, by ministers that you need to walk in love. And as they tell stories about what they had to do, you know, I think, wow, yeah, that's pretty cool. That, that's how we learn. 
and we want to learn from somebody that's got experience. I mean, just everybody in the ministry doesn't mean God called them. It doesn't mean they have any experience. Some ministers aren't any good at preaching. And one of the reasons is, that, number one, they're not anointed. And number two, they weren't called. Number three is they have no experience. So they really, you know, we got to watch who's teaching us because that's how we're going to turn out about how we hear and who's, who's our mentor, who's teaching us God's word. You know, a lot of pastors were never called. I mean, that, that, you know, doesn't make them a bad people. They just went in for maybe because they had administration ability and maybe it looked like it did quite well. But how the sheep grow? See, God doesn't want his sheep tossed to and fro and carried about by every window doctor, by the slide of men and cunning crafts who were by the land way to see. But speaking the truth of love, make her up. So he wants his children, his sheep, to grow up spiritually where they become strong. I mean, the Lord told me back in 1979, Son, I want you to teach my people how to find the places written. I want you to teach my people how to be led by the Holy Spirit. I don't want my children to become a casualty. I don't want Satan doing something to them, taking them out. Teach them what I've taught you. Teach them how to apply my word to their life. Teach them how to find the scripture. Like Jesus found the place it was written. I want my children to be able to go to my word and look up the scripture that they need to have to stand against Satan and come to me for what they want in life. Well, we all need to know God's word, especially the promises, know what belongs to us, how to appropriate this promise, how, how to put them in action, the how-to, you know, how to do this, how, how, to, how to walk in love. One time I was waiting for the service to start, and Ed does, our, our book table is all set up. And uh, so I'm just looking at these titles on, on the, like, CDs, and I noticed that every, 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 every set of, these were cassette tapes, every set there was, it was like how-to, how-to walk in love, how-to tithe, how-to forgive. I thought, wow. You know, there, there weren't real exciting titles. You know? It was like boot camp on every one of them. Well, hey, that's my ministry. But the nevertheless is we apply God's word to our life. That's how we get results. Many dear people, bless their hearts, suffer things today that their father God never wanted them to suffer. All because they refused to let go of what came into their life. They chose to be offended and not forgive and not let go. And by doing so, the enemy is able to get a full hold of them. But by turning their life around, and walking in love and forgiving others and rejoicing that Father God's taking care of all the things that's going on in this world and this life. As you speak God's word and worship the Lord thy God, God moves in on the scene. We don't rail against flesh and blood. Our spiritual weapons that the Father God gave us is his word. And we use the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. Many things are gonna change in this world that seem like it's the worst. Even America will look like it's getting darker each day. But suddenly there'll be a new awakening. In a moment's time, it looked like the nation changed for the good. So don't lose hope and don't lose faith about what you hear and see. It's the enemy trying to distract you and making noises, getting you to look at something else. I'm not done with this nation, and I'm not giving up on it. So you intercede for America. You speak my word and decree and declare it's a nation protected. Don't be moved by what you see and don't be moved by what you hear because you're not hearing the truth and what you see is subject to change. So stand in the gap and intercede and pray and decree and declare and not fill yourself up with the news of the world but fill yourself up with my word you're going to need it and the ones that do so they won't be tossed to and fro they'll be abundantly supplied more than enough so don't be afraid about your future don't be afraid of what's going on for i, I am with you and i'll lead you through all of it and you will live and walk in divine presentation protection provision, everything will be met in your life in abundance. So keep rejoicing and praising me, saith the Lord, and you'll notice the blessings will begin to manifest in your life. The economy will change for the better, but there'll go be some dark times. Don't let that affect you. Stand your ground and keep rejoicing, knowing that your Father God's with you to take care of you, saith the Lord. Praise God. Have you received Jesus Christ, your Lord and Savior? The Bible says here in Romans chapter 10, That if thou shalt confess thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in the heart God's raised the dead, thou shalt be saved. For at the heart man believe the righteous, and with the mouth confession be salvation. Verse 13 it says, For the shall call upon the Lord shall be saved. Let me read the rest of this. How then should they call upon him whom they have not believed? How shall they believe in him whom they have not heard? How shall they hear thou preach, and how shall they preach except be sent? As written, how beautiful are free that preach the gospel of peace and bring glad tidings. But they have not obeyed the gospel. For I say, said, Lord, who hath believed the report? So in faith cometh by hearing, hearing by the word of God. Now, if you haven't received Jesus Christ, your Lord and Savior, you need to do it right now. This, you can't afford to put it off because we never know when something could happen. We die. Thank God for a long life. We want to believe God for that. 
So let's pray this prayer. God, I come. Just say these words with me, and that's all it's going to take. Not because they're my words, because they're God's will. God, I come to you to receive Jesus Christ as my Lord. I confess in my mouth that Jesus is my Lord. I believe he's been raised to death. I believe Jesus is crucified, and you put all my sins, God, upon Jesus, so I could become the righteous of God in Christ. So I receive Jesus Christ, my Lord, today. And I thank you, God, for saving me. Now I can call you my Father God. I thank you, God, for my salvation. Take my life and use it for your glory. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, if you prayed that prayer, I'd like for you to email me, justrichministries.com. Definitely like for you to get in on these morning sessions. Praise God. Now, you know, sir, it said, we read there, how can they be sent? You know, your offerings that you give to your church and to the ministry that you support, it helps them take the message out. And they need your help. Your pastor may never say anything to you about it, but they go through a lot of situations that they usually don't tell the congregation. So always be a great blessing. When you tithe and give, you're helping the work of God to go out. And when you attend church, it's a blessing then. You feed on the Word of God at home, the bonuses you get at church are great. But you know, just by you attending your church, encourages your pastor and your minister. And let them know you appreciate what they're doing. The devil tells them all kinds of things. Many of their pastors got discouraged and quit. We don't lose anymore. We want to keep on gaining ground in Jesus' name. It's a great blessing when you do that. Again, if you got a prayer request, you can email me at jessrichministries.com. And also we got our message, you know, later on during the day. They're on YouTube also at Jesse Rich Ministries. You can uh, subscribe there, get those sent to you, or, you know, get the signal you let you know they're there. But also get the daily devotion sent to you. Send us your email address so we can send those out to you. They're really good. They're very informative. All the stuff we got just real hot off the press and a great blessing to you. I want to tell you, I enjoyed being with you today. Have a great weekend. Until next time, it's Brother Rich Mind. We love you. We're praying for you. And remember, Jesus is Lord to the glory of God the Father.